Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Donna from AxaRadSec.com and I help you go from the classroom to the extra room with ease. So today I'm actually here with a quick video and I'm actually ready for work and I'm going to work like right after this and I wanted to first come to you guys with a video on KVP and contrast. KVP and contrast explain. I'm in need of an x-ray, x-ray, x-ray. to radiography maybe the concept of KVP might be a little bit confusing um, and how it relates to contrast but today I plan to clear that up for you guys and make it as simple as possible without leaving all the important details. If there are some additional things you want me to talk about in another video do comment down below and I will get back to you guys on that as soon as possible. So let's get into it right what is KVP and what does it stand for? The letters K, V and P actually stand for Kilo voltage peak. Now, why is KVP important? You might be wondering. Well, whenever we change KVP, for example, when we increase it, it actually increases the strength and the intensity of the X ray emission spectrum. It creates stronger, more energized X ray photons. The beam is stronger. So, whenever we increase KVP, we actually strengthen the X ray. The next thing I would want to know is how KVP is applied in the tube. Because we can't be talking about KVP and MAS and all these things, and we don't actually know what they really do or what role they really play. So let me get into it and this is a bit of a storyline. If you would like for me to create a separate video on how X-rays are produced, I will gladly do that for you guys. I mean, I plan to do it anyway, but if you want me to kind of bump it up there so it comes sooner than later, then let me know. So AC current, right, is applied to the X-ray generator and we all have X-ray generators in our rooms. Like, we won't be able to create X-rays or generate X-rays without it. So these X-ray generators, this current that is coming to it, is supplied from a power line. The purpose of this X-ray generator is to step up or increase the power coming into the, well, to the generator um, before it reaches to the tube. That way it can be stepped up from a little bit of volts or not as many volts up until like thousands of volts, hundreds of thousands of volts, right? Because believe it or not, we actually need a really, really, really high amount of power and current in order to produce x-rays because you know it's radiation we're producing here right so when this high potential voltage or this high voltage potential is sent to the tube we then have the cathode in the tube it starts to act up right away right all of a sudden due to that high energy it automatically shoots out a beam of electrons from the cathode and the cathode is negative i mean that electrons are negative when this negative um, sets of electrons uh, shoot out of the tube. It needs to go somewhere. It can't just disappear. It can't just shoot out of the tube. It needs to be attracted to something because we know that like with magnets, negative and positive come together. So when it shoots out, it's attracted onto the anode and the anode is the positive part within the tube. So we have the cathode and the anode working together. Now that's just a gist of it, right? So that is why KVP is really important. It helps give us that initial voltage to power up and send straight to the generator and in turn the generator will activate the cathode to shoot out those electrons. So now that we have that part down, let's get into something else. By the way, if you do want a more detailed, not necessarily more detailed, but an easily explained version of how in totality, because this was just a little part, how x-rays are formed, how it's generated, how they are created, then do give this video a thumbs up because that will help me know that you're actually interested in that topic. As well as giving the video a thumbs up will help others, other students, other radiographers, um, other people interested in x-rays and radiation and the field to find these topics and find my channel and learn more as they go as well as it will help the channel grow so yes <laughs> if you're interested in that topic just let me know by giving the video a thumbs up we see now how kvp plays that big role in x-ray production we need kvp okay so now let's get into contrast and how contrast and kvp works hand in hand how they affect each other or actually how kvp affects the contrast now when i'm speaking about contrast we're actually referring to radiographic image quality and you know contrast right 
and I'm going to be saying the word contrast a lot. Contrast is defined as the differences between densities on an image when it comes to the structures that are next to each other. It lets us know how big of a difference these images would be when it comes to the densities of different structures. So we'll get into that very very soon. When I talk about the differences in density, and this is where people get mixed up all the time, when we talk about radiographic contrast and then we use that word density because we know there's radiographic density, when we talk about density in terms of explaining contrast, we're not talking about radiographic density. We're talking about the true basic physics definition of density, which is the the ratio of an object's mass to its volume. So if you have structures with a little bit of density and plenty density, they will look very different next to each other, right? Like bone and soft tissue. But let me not jump ahead too, too quickly. Images with a small amount of difference in contrast will be called low contrast images. And that is because the structures in the density of each structure is so similar, we have to look really hard to differentiate them. So the contrast quality is low. Now think about an abdomen for example. If you have structures like the liver, the kidney, the psoas muscles, you're going to have to look really closely. Um, well, if you have a very trained eye, you may not have to look closely at all. But generally, compared to looking at bone or something, you're going to have to look closely to make sure that you identify and separate those structures clearly on its own. So they are low contrast images because there are many, many shades. And images with a lot of contrast or high contrast images, as we call it, have very big, clearly defined, obvious difference in density. So therefore, images with high contrast look more black and white, and images with low contrast look more gray and more gray. We get it? Let's get into low contrast versus high contrast so we can see exactly what those differences are in a little bit more detail. When we look at a chest x-ray, for example, right, we tend to look or be more interested in structures such as the heart, you know, the lungs, because we're looking at the way you breathe, any lung pathology, any issues, any fluid in the lungs, or anything like that. We look at the diaphragm, specifically more so the costophrenic angles, see if they are blunted, see if they are sharp. Uh, we look at the bifurcation of the trachea sometimes. So those are just some of the things that we tend to look at when we look at a chest. We look at the soft tissue. We're not too concerned at all with the bone, with the thoracic spine. We're looking at the softer structures and, well, the organs, the softer organs within the chest cavity. When we need to look at these softer organs, we always use higher KVP exposures. Now this high KVP allows for more penetrability, allows for more absorption because now the bone not just taking all the x-ray, taking everything and showing up and showing out itself, you know. The heart want to get a little show time too. So the heart gets to absorb a lot more uh, x-rays, the lungs get to absorb, the trachea gets to absorb it. So that's just a way you could think about it, you know. Higher structures higher KVP, sorry, more structures will be shown, more soft tissue structures. When we look at these soft tissue structures, we look for a lower contrast image because there isn't as much difference, for example, with bone and fat versus the heart and, I don't know, the trachea, that's just a random example. You know, the differences between those densities are less. Therefore, we call those x-rays or chest x-rays lower contrast images. In contrast, you see what I did there? In comparison now, when we look at a rib x-ray, the structures that we tend to be interested in would be the ribs, right, obviously, the bone, the articulation, uh, any possible discontinuity in the bone which we call fracture, so if the bone is broken or chipped or anything like that. And in order to see the break in a bone, we need to know to be able to differentiate this piece of bone and this piece of bone. Therefore, we need a higher contrast image. We need to see a stronger difference in the lights and the darks. So that's why a rib x-ray exposure will have a lower KVP in order to have high contrast. We get in it? It's like opposite, you know? So if you want a low KVP, it's because you want a high contrast. And if you want a high KVP is because you want a low contrast image. 
okay. We like you getting it there. Feel like we got there, we got there, yeah? Okay. <laughs> For a chest, we will use exposures around 105 to 120 kvp, but it all depends on the size of the person. And for a rib exposure, we will use lower because we want to see more differences. So we will use around 85, somewhere around there, right? 70 to 85, depending on the size of the person. And that is my differentiation for you guys when it comes to discussing the differences between a low contrast and a high contrast image. So now that we know that, there are some things to consider because your KVP or your contrast, I should say, can either be too low or too high and we want to have a good balance in this, right? If your KVP is too low, your image will look white. We will call that an underexposed image because we didn't have enough strength enough penetrability enough energy in the beam to really get all the structures well absorbed with the x-ray photons so we tend to have a white looking image we're not able to really differentiate any structures at all and we lack any detail on the image and on the other side of that if we use too high of a kvp the image will be burnt out as we call it it will be overexposed we would be able to see details but sometimes the detail is so skewed because not just that it burns out and it's really dark and unusable but also because we are getting a lot of graininess a lot of muttle you know as we call it and i could go into muttle a little bit more but basically when you use higher kvps uh, when you use kvp in general you tend to get scatter radiation so not all the the um x-ray is absorbing to the body some just lie around some just hit the detector and it's a lot of scatter and we it it causes those little dots that little graininess like a old film like effect that we don't want on x-rays because this isn't photography this is medical imaging diagnostic medical imaging we want good quality so that's something to consider as well so a lot of time x-ray unit providers like simons ge whoever they will have exposure charts so that you would know exactly what range of exposure kvp and mas to use for your patient so you don't get an underexposed image that is bright and almost like you can't see anything or an overexposed image which is dark and burnt out and grainy and mottled right we want to have a nice balance no matter whether we want high contrast or low contrast so that is it for this video i hope that this was helpful i tried to break it down as simply as possible without leaving out the important details i hope that this was helpful and i will see you all in the next video do not forget to subscribe okay subscribe give this video a thumbs up and i will see you all in the next one i have to go to work now i don't even know what time it is oh my gosh bye <laughs>